Time now for a financial focus and today we're sharing tips that might ease the pain of inflation and joining us to talk about this is KTMV financial analyst Steve Buden. Steve, thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. So tell us what are some things that we can do or keep in mind to kind of like lessen the burden on us? Yeah, there are two things. Number one, you can certainly make more money if that's not possible. You have to look at the spending side of your ledger. Uh, this is a, an interesting exercise. I do it every now and then. Probably good for our viewers to try. Track your spending for 30, 60, or 90 days. Everything you go out and do and spend money on and write it down. And after you do that, especially after 60 or 90 days, you'll get a good read of where your money goes. And I use 60 or 90 days because that's when you might see your quarterly subscriptions and things like that hit your bank account. And then when you print that out or, or write it down and look at it, it'll give you a, a good roadmap where you can start to, to cut. All right, so where do we go from there? Because we do have a lot of subscriptions, right. Netflix, maybe Hulu, or even, you know, not even subscriptions, but just our daily coffee. Like, what, where do we go from there? Then? Yeah, when you see like the habitual spending, whether it's the coffee or the subscriptions, that's usually where you can start, right? You might say, I don't go to that gym anymore, or I don't watch that channel anymore, but I'm paying 20 or $30. That adds up pretty quickly. You know, you're looking at hundreds of dollars of a year on things that you might not be doing, right, or using. Uh, that's, that's the easy place to cut. Now, some folks would say coffee is a necessity. Probably true. <laughs> but you may not have to spend as much on coffee, right? But when you have that spending roadmap, that gives you a great blueprint to start cutting back because uh, if you can save 50 or 100 or $200 a month on stuff you're really not using, easy, easy savings. And not just cutting back, but also planning ahead, like right. maybe plan your route so that you don't have to spend as much gas. That's right. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is there are apps out there that will help you track your monthly or quarterly dues and they'll help you cancel those subscriptions because sometimes it's a pain in the neck to get those things done and you're going to say, yeah, for $25 a month, I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. There are companies out there that will help you. So take advantage of that. Always good to keep in mind. Anything else that you can help us out with today? No, uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but we just see these high prices staying with us for a little bit. Uh, there's an old adage, nothing cures high prices like high prices. So I think at some point we'll see the things that we're spending a lot of money on level off. They may not go down very quickly, but I think uh, you're going to see a tough couple of months ahead. Definitely some good advice that you gave us here today. Steve Buden, thank you so much for coming in studio. It's been a couple of years. It's great to be back. <laughs> good to meet you in person. I yeah, I know, finally. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. Good morning, Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining us. It is 529 and happening right now. Cutting down on violence and addressing mental health. In four minutes, we'll show you the resources CCSD is now putting in place to help students. And supporting local businesses. In eight minutes, we'll show you where to find some resources in your job search. Plus, several locals getting ready to open their small businesses. In nine minutes, we'll introduce you to the winners of the Great Coffee Shop Giveaway. Good Morning Las Vegas continues right now. Now, 13 Action News. Good Morning Las Vegas, on air and streaming live. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel Moore. And I'm Kelsey McFarland. Today, Saturday, May 21st, we made it to the weekend. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that coffee <laughs> shop giveaway, I hope everybody has had their coffee. You know what? I went with a hot coffee this nice. morning because if you noticed, it feels pretty cool oh, yeah. out there. It's gotten chilly. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I probably should have brought a jacket for the early morning hours because take a look. We are 17 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. So you'll notice the change if you were up at 5.30 a.m. yesterday as well. Wind speeds 10 miles per hour. Not too bad. 62 degrees out there. Really pleasant morning uh, conditions. We're looking at moderate air quality today and tomorrow. You've noticed the dust and the haze out there due to the wind, but the good news is we are seeing those winds decrease today. Northeast winds right around 15 miles per hour at the most through this afternoon as we land to 85 degrees under lots of sunshine. We're staying dry through the weekend. So if you are planning on taking your furry family member out for a walk throughout the day, should be pretty pleasant. 4 p.m. That's going to be right around the warmest portion of your day if you're really trying to protect their paws from the heat. Of course, the asphalt could be quite a bit warmer than the daytime high of that 85 degree. Uh, overnight, we're falling back into the 70s and 
and 60s before a warming trend in the seven day planner. We'll have those details in a few minutes. Turning now to gas prices, they just keep going up and many towns and cities they have to make some tough calls when it comes to construction projects. Yeah, it's not just us impacted by this. Departments also feeling the pinch as they look at repaving and resurfacing roads. Scripps reporter Chris Conti takes a closer look at how this impacts our nation's infrastructure, both now and down the road. It is the kind of sound drivers don't always love to hear. The sound of progress. But this year, that progress is coming at a much higher cost than usual. We're going backwards rather than forward. Charles Dizel is the highway superintendent for Huntington, Massachusetts. The latest census numbers put this rural community's population at 2100. The median income here is $52,000, which, as you can imagine, does not translate into very much revenue from taxes to pave roads. We get 159000 a year. Charles is feeling the pinch in more ways than one, though. Last year, it cost him about $100,000 to pave one mile of road. This year, it's costing him $125,000. So what's happening? The rising cost of gas and inflation are driving up the cost of materials for construction projects nationwide, meaning fewer paved roads this year. Over here, this is one of the catch basins that we're rebuilding. Three months ago, replacing one of these drainage basins cost $230. Now it's costing Charles $770, a 204% increase. This paving project, initially set to cost $1 million, is now $300,000 over budget. Money small communities just don't have. We try to do the best we can, but we're a lot of times we're embarrassed that somebody to see our roads in this end of the state. The public will suffer. That is Ken Simonson. He spent years studying the construction industry. The more recently, we've seen contractors raising their bids sharply, and that has uh, left municipalities as well as private owners uh, scrambling to find the money to cover the cost of projects. As cities and towns nationwide are forced to make cuts to infrastructure projects, drivers, he says, can expect less than ideal road conditions in the long term or might see construction projects drag out in length. The public will suffer. We need more money. We need more money, and it falls on deaf ears. For now, those at the helm will continue to make cutbacks as prices keep rising, in some cases stopping paving projects halfway through completion knowing ultimately it will be somewhere down the road where those of us behind the wheel feel the impact. In Hampshire County, Massachusetts, I'm Chris Conti. And we have an update for you. Students from Rancho High School are asking for more clarification from CCSD. This is after requesting to wear items related to their heritage, culture, and identity at graduation. Now, during the ceremony, the current dress code only allows students to wear items that are school-affiliated. Students are allowed to wear on their gowns as a site-based decision. If groups are requesting to wear cord sashes, etc., you may consider the having submit the criteria to be in the club um, that this made at the school level. When Dr. Jarrod announced to us that it was not their issue, it was the school itself, it's, once again, we're being tossed around, we're not being really thought of, and it's honestly just disrespectful. Now, in previous statements to Channel 13, the district says the focus of the ceremony should be on celebrating the academic achievements of students. Now, during that same board meeting we just showed you, several parents and staff brought up violent incidents that have happened over the past couple of months. Some say the district should be focusing on addressing that topic first. We've got kids in the school that say, okay, we don't like bullies, we, we have policies. But the teachers don't know what to do because the one teacher had to stand there and watch this child get beaten in her classroom because there's no clear cut things told to them of procedures. And everybody's scared because they don't want anyone to get angry if they approach their child the, right, the wrong way. And this comes after a district survey. One in five students in CCSD don't feel safe, it reported. Now, as we've reported in the past, the district says they're working on hiring more police officers, installing more cameras on school campuses, and also giving teachers panic buttons to address violence on campus. And we're going to continue to follow this story, and you can see all of our reports at ktmv.com slash ccsdviolence. And the district is also teaming up with Nevada State College to address mental health in schools. 
The college received a $175,000 grant to support one licensed full-time employee. That employee will help build a pipeline for school-based mental health roles. Officials say the position will also help with expansion efforts in psychology, social work, and school counseling. And CCSD says psychologists are needed more than ever after problems caused by the pandemic. And this month is also Mental Health Awareness Month. There's been a recent boom in online resources to help those in need. Learn to Live is a digital resource that gives users access to online clinicians at, at home guided practices focusing on behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy takes negative thoughts and allows the client to turn them into positive thoughts with a realistic evaluation of their thinking. And the digital program is part of a growing marketplace of easily accessible online and app-based mental health resources. You can also download apps like BetterHelp, Talkspace, or MoodFit. Dr. Williams says these apps will help because you're in the comfort of your own home. That privacy allows you to take control of your own well-being. Happening today, transportation officials at the Clark County School District are looking for more help. The district is hosting a job fair for prospective school bus drivers to fill these shortages. Now, this is happening from 8 to noon at the Richard C. White Transportation Center, which is on Arville near Harmon. Pay starts at more than $21 an hour. Today is also Small Business Saturday, and to celebrate, Clark County officials are hosting a small business showcase. Now, this is at the Clark County Government Center Amphitheater, which is located at 55 South Grand Central Parkway downtown. The event features live music, food trucks, and raffle prizes for people who provide their business cards. This event is happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Lighting in our valley is a serious business. Definitely. <laughs> now, from the lights outside on the strip to the lights inside our resorts, no one does it better. Not like Vegas. In this week's Nevada Built, anchor Todd Quinones takes a look at a company brightening up our lives. Here at CNC Light Shapes, they're making custom designs. We design everything and build everything here. Owner Mike Johnson says he's been cranking out all kinds of different lights since 2006 from nightclubs and poker machines to aquarium lights seen on the Las Vegas-based former TV series, Tanked. This is really funky with not only the lights, but also the etching in the background really kind of gives it a three-dimensional look. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of infinity mirror and also a black hole, if you will, type of image in the middle. Mike can put lights just about anywhere. And then they, these are lighted cabinets. Oh, this is great. How about lights under a countertop? Who would want this? Who's your customer would say, you know what, this is what we want. High end homes is where that would go. Traditionally, we have done a few restaurants. And these aren't your typical wall lights. Let's go to a red or a, maybe a pink. Yeah, easy. You got it. Really simple. And almost like the, the options are limitless. Oh yeah. And in, in a home, you might want several different rooms with different colors or different lights or different on or off or dim, whatever you want to do. Inside a shop near Desert Inn in the 15, the light displays often begin with fabrication, then laser engraving, and even sandblasting, all to get the desired look like this retail display they're working on. And I see here, is this the finished product, I assume? That's it. CNC Light Shapes, helping shape the way Las Vegas gets lit. I'm Todd Quinones reporting. Well, Air Liquid is opening the largest hydrogen production facility in North Las Vegas. The company hosting a grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony on Tuesday to open its new facility. Officials say it will be the largest hydrogen production facility in the U.S. We recently did a Nevada built with a company. It offers industrial and medical gases and related services to a wide range of customers in the energy, industrial and electronics markets. Well, Clark County's Department of Family Services is teaming up with local artist Darian Geenan to open up a traveling art exhibit. And this will be displayed throughout the valley to commemorate National Foster Care Month and bring attention to the needs of foster youth and foster parents. The artist was also in the foster care system when he was younger and says this means a lot to him. It was uh, pretty amazing overall and uh I had to stay as calm as possible when they were telling me, but when I got off the phone with them, I was screaming and running around my house, jumping off the walls. 
<laughs> Love it. The exhibit will be on display at downtown Summerlin through June 2nd. Then it moves to the Clark County Government Center from June 3rd through the 16th. Two businesses have been named the Great Las Vegas Coffee Shop Giveaway winners. They are Dinette Luncheonette and Winnie and Ethel's Downtown Diner. The owners say they were thrilled to be chosen. It was unbelievably difficult. We, uh, I never thought that making a decision on a restaurant or a diner would be so hard. It's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been speechless for a week. Both will be awarded storefronts. They're also getting a 3,000 square foot custom designed space, which is fully built out with furniture and equipment. Winnie and Ethel's Downtown Diner will open in the historic Huntridge Shopping Center on Charleston Boulevard and Maryland Parkway. And Dinette Luncheonette will open at The Bend, located on West Sunset, just west of Durango in the southwest part of the valley. Congratulations to them. Yeah, a couple of new spots to check out. Absolutely. All right, good morning, everyone. Time now is 542 and coming up. The city of Las Vegas is welcoming families with a free event today. We'll show you where you can celebrate the arts at 549. Welcome back. It's the weekend, which means you're probably looking for some new shows or movies to check out. Well, our Josh Bell gives us a sneak peek at the new Downtown Abbey movie, plus a tale of university students in this week's Bell Breakdown. Ding. Ding. <laughs> My top pick this week is the sequel Downton Abbey, A New Era, now playing in theaters. There's not much that's actually new about the second movie based on the beloved British period drama. For longtime Downton fans, that shouldn't be a problem, since the main appeal of the movie is just getting to spend a couple of hours with old friends. Viewers who've been following the lives of the upper crust Crawley family and their servants will enjoy seeing half of the characters deal with a movie shoot at their sprawling estate, while the other half head to the south of France to investigate an unexpected inheritance. The actors still bring their full enthusiasm to the project, even the ones who only get a handful of lines this time around. It's a reassuring, undemanding visit back to the world of the TV series. That's Downton Abbey, A New Era, now in theaters citywide. On a more serious note, the college dramedy Emergency is now playing at Galaxy Cannery and West Wind Drive-In before premiering on Amazon Prime Video next week. An award winner at this year's Sundance Film Festival, Emergency follows three university students over the course of a harrowing night as they attempt to do the right thing. The male roommates, two black and one Latino, find a passed out young white woman in their living room and try to get her help without calling the police and putting themselves at risk. The movie balances a heartfelt look at friendship and growing up with a serious examination of racism, telling a tense but emotionally satisfying story. That's Emergency, now in select theaters and on Amazon next week. I'm Josh Bell, and that's The Bell Breakdown. I was telling Kelsey that I was excited for the Downton Abbey <laughs> movie that's coming Very out. Very excited. She doesn't even know about it. So I, I got so excited, like, oh my gosh, it's coming out. <laughs> got nothing from her. I learned it's Downton, not downtown. <laughs> Downton Abbey. Lesson learned. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Las Vegas. Time now is 546. Let's take a live look outside this morning. That sunrise looking stunning to kick off our Saturday in just three minutes. We'll show you where you can enjoy that beautiful weather this weekend and what our forecast looks like. This morning, the city of Las Vegas kicks off its art festival at Symphony Park. You can catch some music by Frankie Moreno, Zach Ryan, and Paige in the Overt Overtones. <coughs> now, the park will be full of art vendors and activities from the Discovery Children's Museum. And this is across from the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. It goes from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Kelsey, I can't think of a better way to spend the afternoon. And there are so many activities where you can dance this weekend. Yeah, get your dancing shoes out. It's going to be a really pleasant weekend weather-wise as well. So that's great news for all the thousands of visitors that are in town this weekend. You're not dealing with the triple digit heat as we did last weekend. Here is a live look outside. We're starting out your morning very cool, about 15 to 20 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. So you may even want that light sweater or jacket as you head out the door. We are pairing the low 60s right now with wind speeds up to 15 miles per hour in some spots. So for our local mountains, that's translating to about 35 degrees. Red Rock at 45 around the valley today. You're going to see those temperatures landing at around 82 degrees for spots like Boulder City and Summerlin. Henderson closer to 85 today. 
As we mentioned, these temperatures are about six degrees cooler than what's considered average. Still pleasantly warm as we work towards the afternoon. By 10 a.m., we're in the low 70s, low 80s. By 2 o'clock, lots of sunshine, as we mentioned, and those southeast winds staying right around 10 to 15 miles per hour. If you are wanting to head to Lake Mead through the weekend or into Monday, Temperatures are nice and pleasant and wind speeds shouldn't create too much of a boating hazard for you. We're looking at 88 today, 82 for tomorrow and 89 degrees on your Monday. We are going to see that UV index staying high though, so you'll want to bring the sunscreen and try to get some breaks in the shade. Red Rock Canyon also going to be really pleasant today, landing in the upper 70s. Southeast winds 10 miles per hour, mid 80s tomorrow as we watch this warming trend. We'll see that continue into Monday with 85 degrees. So here's a look at that super seven day forecast for EDC goers this uh, evening. are going to see those temperatures falling from the mid 80s right around 7 o'clock into the mid 70s by 11 p.m. Clear skies, wind speed staying below 10 miles per hour. Not too bad for a rave weekend. Sunday, we are looking at warmer conditions and a bit of a breeze returning. We're watching those gusts up to 20 miles per hour by the afternoon with sustained winds at 15. We'll see that 91 degree uh, daytime high right around 4 to 5 o'clock, but you'll be starting your morning in the upper 60s and low 70s. Monday also looks warm with lots of sunshine. We are going to see partly cloudy moving in towards the afternoon, mid 80s, right around uh, the lighter time times like noontime. That warming trend continues though as we work towards Tuesday. Wednesday we'll see those mid 90s and by Thursday we're looking about 10 degrees above average at 101 degrees back in the forecast. Time now is 5:53. Good morning, Las Vegas. Coming up, the Aces are warming up for a big game against the Phoenix Mercury going down this afternoon. In 3 minutes we'll show you the local star who they'll face off against on the court. Welcome back. The Becky Hammond era continues as the Las Vegas Aces prepare to tip off against the Phoenix Mercury. Yeah, the team is 5 and 0 oh so far this season and they're gearing up for another big home game today. They'll be taking on the Phoenix Mercury, which features former Centennial High School and Arizona basketball standout Sam Thomas. Uh, this will be the third team, third time rather, the teams are squaring off this season. The Aces beating them once in Phoenix and once again here at home. Tip-off is at noon inside the Michelob Ultra Arena. You can also watch the game right here on Channel 13. Let's keep this momentum yeah, going. Go I love it. Love yeah. it too. Time now is 5.57 and we've got another full hour of news coming up in just a few minutes. You are watching Good Morning Las Vegas. Another beautiful look at that sunrise. We'll be right back on this Saturday morning. Good morning, Las Vegas. Thank you so much for waking up with us. It is 6 a.m. and happening right now. We're learning more details after a local cyclist is killed. Coming up in one minute, the reaction from his family and why they are asking for drivers and police to step up. And honoring the best and brightest. Coming up in five minutes, we'll introduce you to some of the inductees of the UNLV Sports Hall of Fame. And thousands of people now in the valley ready to party. We've got a look at today's EDC events and how that could impact traffic around the valley today. Good morning, Las Vegas starts right now. Now, 13 Action News. Good morning, Las Vegas. On air and streaming live. Hello again and thank you for joining us. I'm Rachel Moore. And I'm Kelsey McFarland. Today, Saturday, May 21st, we made it to the weekend. And I wanted to ask you, with EDC <laughs> in town, do you have a dance move that you go to, like a chair? Well, since you're sitting down, do you have like a chair dance move? <laughs> that is a great question. No. Maybe the robot? <laughs> I have gotten to the age where I start to dance and point my fingers. You're a finger dancer, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll get, we'll get things moving this morning. The good news is we have lots of great weather in store for all the visitors and of course the locals that are wanting to dance the night away. I know they're probably just wrapping up this morning. Here is a live look outside. We are about 15 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. We're starting out in the low 60s this morning. For some spots like Pahrump, as cool as 57 degrees, Boulder City at 61. 
Our temperatures today are about six degrees below average for those daytime highs, landing in the mid 80s for Las Vegas, Pahrump at 83, Laughlin 92 today. So expect less wind, plenty of sunshine, overall really pleasantly warm day ahead of us. We'll be hitting that 85 degree mark by around five o'clock with moderate air quality today. We are going to be jumping up to the triple digits though in that seven day planner. I'll tell you when to expect that still ahead. All right, temperatures are cooling down today, but they've been going up over the past couple of weeks and it's increasing fire dangers in our area. So local officials are putting restrictions in place and these are in effect at all state lands in Clark County. So listen to what you can't use campfires, charcoal stoves, welding or torches with open flames or explosives and fireworks. Now for more information on this, go to KTMV.com slash links. And now to an update, the family of a man killed while cycling in North Las Vegas is asking police for change. This all happened at Durrell and Bostick Weir near North 5th Street and the 215. Ben Black's family said he was struck and killed by a black SUV on Sunday. They add they see many people going more than the posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour, and they'd like to put more measures in place to keep people safe. We need to, to take yeah. this seriously get the speed bumps and get the, you know, get the stop signs, you know? I mean, there's so many people lost on, on yeah. these streets, on bikes. And Black is the sixth cyclist killed in Clark County just this year. Police say the driver who hit him did cooperate with officers and no charges were filed. Meantime, a ghost bike memorial will be set up at that intersection tonight at 730. All of that information is on our website right now at KTNV.com. And a manhunt is underway for several suspects accused of helping carry out a deadly robbery in the valley. This happened at the end of March. Authorities still searching for three suspects. They've identified two of them as Christina Schultz and Michael Overton. Investigators say they believe Schultz knew the victim and set the robbery up by calling the other suspects to come by a home near Torrey Pines and Robindale Road. Police say they broke into the home with guns and killed a woman while trying to steal her jewelry. They were last seen running northbound on Torrey Pines from the scene. This murder is a result of a very brazen residential robbery. And investigators say they believe that Schultz and Overton are no longer in the state and might even be on the East Coast now. They face multiple felony charges, including murder, kidnapping and burglary. Metro is also looking for a person of interest in connection to a casino chips theft. Police say it's happened five different times now since November 2021, and this is at casinos near Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara. Investigators say the person enters the casino, grabs chips from a table, and then just runs away. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. And it appears that some thieves are trying to cool off by stealing water out of fire hydrants. Now, this is a problem that the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been trying to crack down on. So far this year, we've had about a dozen incidents of water theft that we were, we had to go out and issue fines. And the vast majority of them have been in the construction industry. We found instances of both. We found some where it has been oversight, but we found some where folks are doing something that's unscrupulous and attempting to circumvent uh, the service rules. The Water Authority says stealing water can lead to a $5,000 fine for the first offense. Now to a consumer alert, you may be seeing less of those pesky spam calls coming through your phone. Nevada Attorney General Aaron Ford and the FCC are teaming up to investigate robocalls. This agreement allows state and federal officials to share information and more than 20 states across the U.S., including Nevada, are working with the FCC to crack down on those calls. Well, we're learning more about how our economy is recovering from the pandemic. Dieter says private sector employment last month was higher than it was before the pandemic. That report showing the state added 5,200 jobs in April. 1,900 of those were right here in the Valley. And right now, Nevada's unemployment rate is at 5%, which hasn't really changed since March. All right, we've all seen it. That huge steel exosphere at the corner of Sands and Cobalt Lane. It's been under construction for months now, even years. 
and it's getting ready to be topped off. Now this is the Madison Square Garden Entertainment Sphere. Construction was put on hold back in April 2020 because of the pandemic, and they started again later that year, and now crews are expected to finish it later this month. The exosphere surrounds the actual venue and it will display what executives call the largest LED screen in the world. The MSG sphere is expected to open next year. And happening today, local figure skaters are hosting a fundraiser for the people of Ukraine. It's called Skate for Ukraine, happening at the Las Vegas Ice Center. Figure skaters will be performing solo, duet, and group routines. You're seeing a preview of one of their rehearsals here. Now, the event coordinator, Ashlyn Lund Course, says the figure skating community is like a family, and this is a cause that's close to the heart. So some of the skaters here are Ukrainian and so they have family over there that have had to go to Poland and had to leave their homes and everything so it just hits a little close to home for us and there are a lot of figure skaters in Ukraine that had to leave to go somewhere else to even train so we just wanted to help in any way that we could. And shirts and baked goods will also be for sale. That's before the event kicks off at 1.15. General admission tickets are $15. VIP is $20 to $50. Online sales go until 8 a.m. today, so you only have two hours to act there. But you can also purchase tickets at the front desk inside the Las Vegas Ice Center. And net proceeds go to UNICEF. A new batch of UNLV greats will soon enter the School Athletics Hall of Fame. Today, 11 inductees, including players, a coach, a longtime staffer, and several contributors will be honored. Now, this includes football standout Ryan Wolf, who says he's always been driven to be the best. I didn't realize how much I liked it or enjoyed it until there was someone that was about to, to, to beat it. And then I found myself like being more invested than I thought I was. Um, but just to be in the, the category of the best at anything is what was drove me to, to practice every day as hard as I did. The new class will be inducted at the Strip View Pavilion at the Thomas and Mack Center. The ceremony is, is open to the public and tickets cost $125. Well, volunteers are working to clean up the valley today. Clark County Commissioner Jim Gibson and Henderson Councilwoman Michelle Romero are hosting a trail cleanup this morning. That'll be happening at the East Lake Mead Parkway Trail from 930 to 1130. Volunteers will meet at Mountain Lake Park at 9 a.m. Then they'll pick up some rakes, shovels, gloves, and trash bags all before heading out. And you can still register to help and find more information at ktnv.com slash links. All right, we talked about it. It's EDC weekend, which means thousands <laughs> are dancing to the music, including Kelsey and I. I have another <laughs> dance move for you in the seat. Okay. The oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I got it. But that could also mean some slowdowns on the road. Yeah, we've seen it before. Traffic anchors or Asbury has some more on the potential problem spots that you'll want to look out for over the next two days. Traffic is already ramping up here along the I-15 and the northeast side of town near 15 and Range Road and the Speedway, all ahead of the Electric Daisy Carnival, better known as EDC. Commuters who travel along the 15 northbound in the Northeast Valley will see some traffic delays this weekend for EDC. The I-15 near the Speedway is already under construction, so not only are there lane closures in the area, but you add a festival and that could make the commute a nightmare. Drivers should be aware that there will be some traffic pattern shifts around exits 52, 54, and 58 from the I-15 northbound. Las Vegas Boulevard will also see some lane shifts and some restrictions along Craig Road and near the apex. Additionally, Craig Road between Nellis and Las Vegas Boulevard will see some travel restrictions as well. They are temporary changes and not full on closures. They went into effect earlier today and they will stay in place until Monday morning around 9:30 a.m. Nevada Department of Transportation says the most challenging commute will be on Monday once the festival starts wrapping up Sunday night. For more information on transportation to EDC Festival or for ride sharing and shuttle information, you can head over to our website, ktnv.com slash traffic. In North Las Vegas, Zora Asbury reporting. And hey, you don't have to head to the Speedway to get your fix of house music. In honor of EDC being in town, several acts also taking their talents to the Strip. Today, you can catch artists like Tiesto, Martin Garrix, Alesso, and DJ Polly D. They'll be at several places like AU Day Club at Resorts World, Wet Republic at the MGM Grand, and the Marquee Nightclub at the Cosmo. A lot of good music to dance to, Kelsey. Yeah, you wanted to do the wave? 
the snake. Oh, are we? Are I don't. We, <laughs> <laughs> is it? Does it come off on camera? Yeah, Let us know. know. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Las Vegas. We still have more coming up. Now, with warmer temperatures, you might be looking to escape the valley for a vacation getaway. In three minutes, we'll show you some affordable staycations right here in Nevada. Welcome back. With everything getting more and more expensive these days, you might think whether you can afford that summer vacation, but there are some budget friendly options right here in Nevada that you can experience for a staycation. I love a good staycation and here are some more details on some popular spots that are only a car ride away. To really see the best views, you're going to have to get on a trail. Matthew Meyer is the founder of Max Tour, a local company helping tourists see some of the best views outside Las Vegas. Of course, the number one attraction he says every local should visit is the Grand Canyon, just over four hours away. If you have the time to hike down into the canyon, the perspective of the canyon really changes as you go down into it. But there's also nice trails along the rim that, you know, every minute you come around a turn, just have a brand new, beautiful view of the Grand Canyon. Number two on Matthew's list is probably his personal favorite. Zion Spectacular. You can do it in a day. It's the third most popular national park in the United States. Just over three hours northeast of Las Vegas, Zion National Park features steep red cliffs and even forest trails along the Virgin River. You can see a lot from just your car, but you're going to have to get out and get on the trails to see some of the best scenery. I really like the Emerald Pools Trail, also the Canyon Overlook Trail. Zion also has one of the best hikes for real adventurous hikers. They have one of the scariest, yet one of the most rewarding hikes in the United States. This is called Angel's Landing Hike. You do need a permit now, but I think people might regret not doing it because it is really a thrilling hike. Finally, Matthew says you got to check out Bryce Canyon National Park about four and a half hours away. Hugely popular. Uh, Bryce Canyon, it's another one that I think everyone should make a point to try to see at some point. Uh, very popular, very beautiful. The park is known for its crimson colored spire shaped rock formations. Matthew says for the best scenery, try a hike on the Queens Garden Navajo Loop Trail. But wherever you decide to do your hiking this summer, Matthew says avoid the weekends if possible. He also suggests a couple of essentials. Make sure you have water in your car. I would recommend bringing a paper map. The cell service can get a little spotty out there. Um, and just know where you're going. That was Dave Cavassier reporting in Kelsey. Hiking does not sound like a bad idea lately. Yeah, it really has been very pleasant uh, and we continue to see that over the weekend. Zion is a family favorite uh, to visit and I will say it's getting more and more crowded, especially on weekends. So that was good advice to try to go with weekdays if you can. A live look outside. We are starting out clear, but a tad hazy. We do have moderate air quality out there. Some lingering impacts from the wind and blowing dust that we saw throughout the week. Temperatures now starting out in the low 60s, quite a bit cooler than what we saw just this time yesterday. So you'll notice the change. You may want to keep that sweater handy. Wind speeds right now 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that's about all we'll see as far as the wind goes today. Not much of a nuisance and should not impact any of your outdoor weekend plans. Highs today going to be landing in the mid 80s, so this is about six degrees cooler than what we consider average for this time of year. Really pleasant afternoon highs as we land in the low 90s for spots like Laughlin, those lower elevations. For your Saturday morning, planning it out, we're looking at those low 70s hitting by 9 a.m. Again, lots of sunshine here, 72 degrees at 10 o'clock. And later today, the warmest portion of your day going to be right around 4 to 5 o'clock. UV index is still high today, so you'll want to keep the sunscreen handy if you do decide to hit the pool. We're going to see those temperatures falling back into the 70s as we work into the evening hours. So those heading to EDC tonight, thankfully not dealing with the extreme heat that we typically see, but we are looking at clear skies, nice and light winds. Those temps tumbling back into the low 70s by midnight. And as we party into the early morning hours, those temps falling back into the mid to upper 60s. Not too bad. Overnight's officially dropping into the low 60s for spots like Anthem. Las Vegas is 65, Laughlin 71, and Pahrump you'll see closer to the mid 50s. 
Tomorrow we are tacking on some extra warmth. We're looking at low 90s for those daytime highs. This is closer to where we really should be for this time of year. We're also going to add a bit of a breeze towards the afternoon. Southwest winds 15 miles per hour gusts to 20. We're going to stay in the low 90s through Monday before a warming trend kicks off and that'll bring us into the mid 90s Tuesday, Wednesday. Triple digits returning to the forecast on Thursday. Those temperatures about 10 degrees or so above average average for this time of year. We're looking warm into next weekend as those overnights fall from the mid 60s tonight into the mid 70s by Thursday evening. From the bright and bold lights on the strip to the intimate lighting settings inside our lovely resorts, no other city can light up like Las Vegas. In this week's Nevada Built, Todd Quinona shines light on a company brightening up our lives. Here at CNC Light Shapes, they're making custom designs. We design everything and build everything here. Owner Mike Johnson says he's been cranking out all kinds of different lights since 2006, from nightclubs and poker machines to aquarium lights seen on the Las Vegas based former TV series Tanked. This is really funky with not only the lights, but also the etching in the background really kind of gives it a three dimensional look. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of infinity mirror and also a black hole, if you will, type of image in the middle. Mike can put lights just about anywhere. And then they, these are lighted cabinets. Oh, this is great. How about lights under a countertop? Who would want this? Who's your customer would say, you know what, this is what we want. High end homes is where that would go. Traditionally, we have done a few restaurants. And these aren't your typical wall lights. Let's go to a red or a, maybe a pink. Yeah. Easy. You got it. Really simple. And almost like the, the options are limitless. Oh, yeah. And in, in a home, you might want several different rooms with different colors and different lights or different on or off or dim, whatever you want to do. Inside a shop near Desert Inn in the 15, the light displays often begin with fabrication, then laser engraving, and even sandblasting, all to get the desired look like this retail display they're working on. And I see here, is this the finished product, I assume? That's it. CNC Light Shapes, helping shape the way Las Vegas gets lit. I'm Todd Quinones reporting. No one does it better. <laughs> and you know right. what? I love looking at the pictures from space because Las Vegas is the brightest city on the planet. Especially really cool. weekends like this oh, with yeah. EDC, the Speedway. Woo! <laughs> bright and neon. She wants to do some more dancing. I can, I can, <laughs> hint, I can get your hint right now. <laughs> Later. Good morning, Las Vegas. Time now is 622. If you are looking for ways to help local students at 536, we'll show you the two organizations teaming up to address mental health. Welcome back. It's the weekend, which means you're probably looking for some new shows or movies to check out. Or all Josh, Josh Bell rather gives us a sneak peek at the new Downton Abbey Downton movie Abbey. that you're very excited yes, about. Plus <laughs> a tale of university students in this week's Bell Breakdown. Ding. My top pick this week is the sequel, Downton Abbey, A New Era, now playing in theaters. There's not much that's actually new about the second movie based on the beloved British period drama. For longtime Downton fans, that shouldn't be a problem, since the main appeal of the movie is just getting to spend a couple of hours with old friends. Yeah. Viewers who've been following the lives of the upper crust Crawley family and their servants will enjoy seeing half of the characters deal with a movie shoot at their sprawling estate, while the other half head to the south of France to investigate an unexpected inheritance. The actors still bring their full enthusiasm to the project, even the ones who only get a handful of lines this time around. It's a reassuring, undemanding visit back to the world of the TV series. That's Downton Abbey, A New Era, now in theaters citywide. On a more serious note, the college dramedy Emergency is now playing at Galaxy Cannery and West Wind Drive-In before premiering on Amazon Prime Video next week. An award winner at this year's Sundance Film Festival, Emergency follows three university students over the course of a harrowing night as they attempt to do the right thing. The male roommates, two black and one Latino, find a passed out young white woman in their living room and try to get her help without calling the police and putting themselves at risk. 
Ghost. The movie balances a heartfelt look at friendship and growing up with a serious examination of racism, telling a tense but emotionally satisfying story. That's Emergency, now in select theaters and on Amazon next week. I'm Josh Bell, and that's the Bell Breakdown. Good morning, Las Vegas. Time now is 627. Let's take a live look outside on this Saturday morning. In just three minutes, we'll show you where you can enjoy this beautiful weather, and we'll check out that warming weather forecast still ahead. Good morning, Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us. It is 6.30 a.m. and happening right now. CCSD cutting down on violence and addressing mental health. In four minutes, we'll show you the resources the district is putting in place to help students. Supporting local businesses. In eight minutes, we'll show you where to find some resources in your job search. Plus, locals getting ready to open their own small businesses. In nine minutes, we are introducing you to the winners of the Great Coffee Shop Giveaway. Good Morning Las Vegas continues right now. Now, 13 Action News. Good Morning Las Vegas, on air and streaming live. Hello again. Happy Saturday to you at home. I'm Rachel Moore and I'm Kelsey McFarland. Today's Saturday, May 21st. It is a jam packed weekend oh, yeah. with lots of things happening. Lots of things <laughs> happening, including all the dancing moves <laughs> we showed you. I feel like we've showed you enough, but I still kind of have it in me. I need more bit. coffee to do any <laughs> dance moves this morning. Speaking of which, I'm going with the hot coffee.